Okay, so here we want to solve the initial value problem. x times y prime plus 6y is equal to 3x, y to the 4 thirds, with initial condition y of 1 is 1 over 8. Now the first thing I'm going to notice about this equation is it looks like a Bernoulli equation because I have this 4 thirds sitting up in the power, right? It's a rational power. And so I'm going to divide all, uh, both sides of the equation by x to get it in the standard form, y prime plus 6 over xy is equal to 3y to the 4 thirds. And you can see this is a Bernoulli equation with the power n being 4 thirds. And so the way we solve this is we're going to make the substitution u is equal to y to the 1 minus n. So in this case, it's 1 minus 4 thirds or negative 1 third. Then if that's so, then the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be negative a third times y to the negative 4 thirds by the power rule. And then by the chain rule, we multiply by y prime. And we can transform the original differential equation into an equation just in terms of u. Uh, the way I like to do this is first divide by y to the n, in this case, y to the 4 thirds on both sides of the equation. I get y to the negative 4 thirds y prime plus 6 over x. And I, when I divide y by y to the n, or y to the 4 thirds, I get y to the 1 minus 4 thirds or negative 1 third. And then the right side just becomes 3. And then notice here that this part on the left is, right, if I, if I take this equation, I solve it for y to the 4 thirds y prime, I get negative 3u prime, just like that. So this is going to be negative 3u prime plus 6 over x. And notice y to the negative 1 third is just u, and that's equal to 3. And now this is just a first order linear differential equation. I can divide both sides by negative 3 to get into the standard form. And notice that this is just a first order linear differential equation in terms of u. And I can divide it by negative 3 to get it into the standard form. 2 divided by x u is equal to negative 1. And from here, I can use whatever method you'd like to solve um, these types of equations, linear, first order, differential equations. I'll use an integrating factor. So the integrating factor is e to the coefficient on u. So I have negative 2 over x dx. And the antiderivative of that is 2 natural log x. Like we don't need the absolute value because you only need one possible integrating factor. We don't need all possible integrating factors. We get natural log x to the negative 2. So we get 1 over x squared. And so then I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the integrating factor. On the other side, I get negative 1 over x squared. The left hand side becomes integrating factor times our unknown function, the derivative of that. Now we integrate both sides with respect to x. The left hand side just becomes the inside part. The right hand side becomes 1 over x plus an arbitrary constant. And then I'm solving for u, so I get x plus cx squared. But I want my solution to be for y in terms of x, not u. So I'm going to substitute back in u is equal to negative 1, sorry, is equal to y to the negative 1 third. And then finally, I'm going to raise both sides to the negative 3 power. So I get y on the left hand side, and raising the right hand side to the negative 3 power is the same as 1 over the positive 3 power. And so that is my solution, my general solution for y in terms of x. But we have our initial condition, which is that y of 1 is equal to 1 over 8. And so if I plug in 1 to my general solution, I get well 1 over 1 plus c times 1 squared. So I get 1 plus c all cubed. And that's 1 over 8 which means that 1 plus c q 
cubed is equal to 8, which means 1 plus c is equal to the cube root of 8 or 2, which means c is equal to 1. And so my final answer, my particular solution, is y equals equal to x, sorry, y of x is equal to 1 over x plus c is 1, x squared cubed. Now keep in mind that this function, because our initial condition was y of 1, right, the x value was 1, notice that this function is not defined at x equals 0, and so this particular solution is a solution to the, to the initial value problem on the interval from 0 to infinity. Right, we take the largest interval that contains the initial value that, the, that y is continuous on. So y is continuous on 0 to infinity, and that's the interval that contains the initial value. And one more thing, we could rewrite this. That is, this, this is a perfectly good final solution. But we could rewrite this as 1 over x cubed 1 plus x cubed. Same answer, maybe the second one looks a little better in my opinion but either are good answers.